In mathematics, a function is like a machine that takes an input and produces a specific output. Just as a machine processes raw materials to create a finished product, a function processes an input to generate an output. Think of a vending machine. You press a button, which is the input, and get a snack, which is the output. The vending machine follows a specific set of rules to deliver the correct snack based on your selection. In a function, each input has exactly one output. This means that for every button you press on the vending machine, you get one specific snack. There are no surprises or multiple outcomes. We can write functions as equations. These equations help us understand and predict the output for any given input. For example, the function f of x equals x plus 2 takes an input x, adds 2 to it, and gives the result as the output. This is a simple linear function. Let's try it. If we input x equals 3, the function gives us f of 3 equals 3 plus 2, which equals 5. This shows how the function processes the input to produce the output. This means when the input is 3, the output of the function is 5. The function consistently follows its rule to provide the correct output. Functions help us describe relationships between different quantities in mathematics. They are fundamental in understanding how variables interact and change. By mastering functions, we can solve complex problems and make predictions in various fields such as physics, engineering, economics, and more. As we delve deeper into the world of functions, we'll explore different types such as linear, quadratic, and exponential functions. Each type has its own unique properties and applications. Understanding these will enhance your mathematical skills and open up new avenues for problem solving. So get ready to embark on this mathematical journey. Functions are not just abstract concepts. They are powerful tools that help us make sense of the world around us. Let's dive in and discover the fascinating world of functions together. Now imagine wanting to reverse the process of a function. Instead of going from input to output, we want to go from output to input. This is where inverse functions come into play. An inverse function undoes the action of the original function. It takes the output of the original function and tells us what the input must have been. Think of it like this. If the original function ties your shoelaces, the inverse function unties them. Inverse functions are powerful tools in mathematics because they help us solve for the unknown. If we know the output and the function, we can use the inverse function to find the input. Let's say we have a function that converts Celsius to Fahrenheit f of c equals 9 fifth c plus 32. This function takes a temperature in Celsius and converts it to Fahrenheit. Now imagine we know the temperature in Fahrenheit, let's say 68 degrees Fahrenheit, and want to find the equivalent temperature in Celsius. We need the inverse function. The inverse function, in this case, would take the temperature in Fahrenheit and convert it back to Celsius. We'll learn how to find it in the next section. Finding the inverse of a function is like retracing our steps. It's a methodical process that allows us to reverse the roles of the input and output. Here's a step-by-step -step guide to help you understand this concept better. First, write the function as an equation. This is the foundation of our process, and it sets the stage for everything that follows. For example, let's use a simple function y equals 2x plus 3. This linear function will serve as our example throughout this guide. Second, swap x and y. This step is crucial because it begins the process of finding the inverse. This means replacing every x with y and every y with x. By doing this, we are essentially reversing the function's input and output. Our equation becomes x equals 2y plus 3. Third, solve for y. This step involves isolating y on one side of the equation. Rearrange the equation to get y by itself on one side. y equals x minus 3 divided by 2. This step may require some algebraic manipulation. Finally, replace y with f inverse of x. This notation is a standard way to indicate that we have found the inverse function. This notation indicates the inverse function. It tells us that for every x value, we can find a corresponding y value using this new function. So the inverse of our original function is f inverse of x equals x minus 3 divided by 2. This new function allows us to reverse the process and find the original input from the output. That's it. 
we've successfully found the inverse function. By following these steps, you can find the inverse of any function, making it a powerful tool in your mathematical toolkit. Section 5. Verifying the inverse. In this section, we will delve into the process of verifying whether we have correctly identified the inverse of a given function. This is a crucial step in ensuring the accuracy of our mathematical operations. To make sure we found the correct inverse, we can verify it. Verification involves a systematic approach where we use the output of the original function as the input for the inverse function. We can do this by taking the output of the original function and using it as the input for the inverse function. This process helps us confirm that the inverse function truly reverses the effect of the original function. The result should be our original input. If the output of the inverse function matches the initial input of the original function, we can be confident that our inverse function is correct. Let's test this with our previous example. By revisiting our earlier calculations, we can see the verification process in action. If we input x equals 4 into the original function, y equals 2x plus 3, we get y equals 11. This step involves substituting the value of x into the function to find the corresponding y value. Now let's input y equals 11 into the inverse function. f inverse of x equals x minus 3 divided by 2. This step is crucial as it tests the inverse function with the output of the original function. We get f inverse of 11 equals 11 minus 3 divided by 2, which equals 4. By performing this calculation, we are essentially reversing the original function's operation. The output of the inverse function is 4, which was our original input. This successful match confirms the accuracy of our inverse function. This confirms that we found the correct inverse function. By verifying our results, we ensure that our mathematical processes are reliable and accurate, reinforcing our understanding of function and inverse function relationships. Section 6. Not all functions have inverses. It's important to note that not all functions have inverses that are also functions. For a function to have an inverse, it needs to be a one-to-one -one function. A one-to-one -one function means that each input has a unique output, and each output has a unique input. For example, the function f of x equals x squared is not one-to-one. -one. If we input x equals 2, we get f of 2 equals 4. But if we input x equals negative 2, we also get f of negative 2 equals 4. This means that the output 4 has two different inputs, so the function is not one-to-one. -one. Therefore, it does not have an inverse function. Section 7. The importance of restrictions. Sometimes we can restrict the domain of a function to make it one-to-one. -one. This means we limit the possible input values. For example, if we restrict the domain of f of x equals x squared to only positive numbers, it becomes a one-to-one -one function and has an inverse. Restricting the domain is important because it allows us to define inverse functions for a wider range of functions. It ensures that the inverse function is well-defined, meaning each input has only one possible output. Section 8. The Horizontal Line Test there's a graphical way to determine if a function is one-to-one -one the horizontal line test. If any horizontal line intersects the graph of a function at more than one point, the function is not one-to-one. -one. This means it doesn't have an inverse function. If every horizontal line intersects the graph at most once, the function is one-to-one -one and has an inverse function. The horizontal line test is a quick and visual way to check if a function has an inverse. It helps us understand the relationship between the graph of a function and the existence of its inverse. Section 9. Applications of Inverse Functions Inverse functions are widely used in various fields, including mathematics, solving equations, finding roots of functions, and understanding the behavior of functions, physics, calculating distances, velocities, and accelerations from given data, engineering, designing circuits, analyzing signals, and controlling systems, computer science cryptography, data compression, and image processing. These are just a few examples of the countless applications of inverse functions in different fields. 
Inverse functions are essential tools for solving real-world problems and understanding complex systems. Section 10. Conclusion. The power of inverse functions. Inverse functions are powerful mathematical tools that allow us to reverse processes, solve equations, and gain deeper insights into the relationships between variables. By understanding the concept of inverse functions, we can solve a wider range of problems and appreciate the elegance and interconnectedness of mathematics. Next time you encounter a situation where you need to undo a process or solve for an unknown variable, remember the power of inverse functions.